Okay, we looked at how to duplicate a monster a few steps ago. We're going to make a brand new one, and this is going to be our quote-unquote boss. Now, boss is kind of silly in this case because still all he's going to be able to do is move around the room. But let's let's give him an interesting motion at least, and let's take a look at some, some fun different things we can do and use multiple states. Um, so uh, let's go to gate. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's go to monster graphics. Banks, you know what? He's not loaded. I don't have any graphics for him. So I'm going to go to pixel editor. I'm going to load up. There's something very special about this character. Um, I'm going to go to my beta assets that I gave you guys. Graphics, Banshee. And again, this is a nice reminder. This is a larger character. There we go. Um, this is a larger 8x8, eight eight, he looks like that. So it's 5x4. It's a larger character, so it feels a little bit more menacing. The reason the Banshee here is is significant is, uh, originally I started creating an idea for Mystic Searches on Paper in 1988. A lot of you guys know this story. It's how the New Ape Heroes came about, the documentary, and Mystic Searches, and inevitably led to Nest Maker. This character right here, the Banshee, this sort of forest specter, uh, is one of the only surviving uh creatures that actually existed on that original uh, uh, design document illustrations. So it's kind of cool that he's made it all the way from eight-year-old brain to now, uh, and here we are playing with him in the in the uh, nest, in nest Maker, the thing I, that we all wish we had in 1988, right? Okay, so first, uh, I want to... Uh, conform him. He doesn't conform at all. Um, this is all the bad pixels. All of them are bad. I don't want to immediately change the background to black though, because then I'll then if when I change black, this will go away. So I want to make the outline the third color. I'm gonna change this to dummy palettes. But you know what? I don't even need to. Cause I'm gonna I'm gonna get used to doing this in brgb and just knowing I can assign it to colors later. Um, so I'm gonna make the outline global color change. Black is going to be changed to blue, all right, um, and red is going to be the uh, the the cape, and green is going to be the eye and the hand color here, and then black is going to be the background. Okay, so now he's conformed, and if I put him through a palette, we we've we've gone over that a bunch. I hope I've <laughs> I've bashed in your head <laughs> how that works. Um, so I'm going to copy this guy. Oops, I'm going to copy this guy. Control C. I'm going to make a new BMP that's a, for that's monster tiles. And I'm going to paste him to the top left corner of monster tiles. Make sure I'm all the way to the top left. Okay, and I'm going to save this. And I'm going to save it over the top of another monster uh, tile set. So game engine data. Oops, I'm sorry. Nope. Graphic assets and... Not Monster Zero, but Monster One. And I'm going to replace it, and I'm going to reload it. Yep. And just like I did before, I'm going to go to Monsters. I'm going to click on the folder so I can create a new one. And instead of being on Tile Zero, I'm going to choose Tiles One. And there's my Banshee. And I don't want to start changing his palette here. I want to give him a new palette. I'm actually going to give him two palettes. Uh, I'm going to call this Banshee One. And I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to give him a second palette down here. I'm going to call it Banshee 2. Rename that one. Okay, so with Banshee 1, let's see. I want this to be, I can make it black or dark blue. I'm not sure which is going to end up looking better. It's going to be hard to see here. Um, let's see. kind of like this dark blue cape thing going on. Um, very ominous. Let's go with that. And I like the red eyes, but I'm going to make his eyes sort of flash red when he's moving. So I'm going to give him uh, like a bright yellow eyes like this, I guess. And then they're going to flash red when he's moving around. Uh, I could even make him change to black when he's not moving. Uh, that, that would be a little bit trickier, but um, okay. So I'm going to save him before I do much else. Remember, I see save, which means he's not saved yet. When I save him, I'm going to click on him, and now I can start editing him. I don't see save anymore, which means, okay, now I'm actually, <clears throat> uh, all my changes are being saved. So um, let's make a five wide by four tall graphic, 
And just like I did with all the other uh, sprites, I'm going to... Now, he's not quite symmetrical, even though he kind of looks like he would be. And that's going to play... That's actually a strength. We're actually going to use that to give him a, his, his cape a little bit of wiggle. Um, and it's gonna give we're, it's gonna give him a floaty looking animation, and so to go along with that floating looking animation, we're gonna give him sort of a floating movement as well. Um, also, if you notice, just a good practice, both sides of this are completely black uh, squares, um, and if I could move him down one pixel and, and lose one pixel, I could probably save myself one, two, three, four black pixels in the tile set. I could stick something else here and here um, that I want, might want to use for other sprites in this tile set. So it's just about, you know, conserving, um, conserving graphic data. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it like that. My, this is frame one. I'm going to, yep. I'm just going to leave this guy as is, uh, Actually, let me give him two frames. I'm going to copy the first frame, paste him in the second frame. And this is for when he's moving. And I'm going to flip this frame. So he's going to kind of, you know, do that, which is just a really, really simple, stupid animation. But also what I'm going to do is I'm going to make his eyes glow. And how I'm going to do that is I'm, gonna, I'm basically going to make a duplicate of this, um, this sub palette except the white color is going to be red and i'm not sure which red would look best um like a, these colors are approximations they might look different on your tv or your system what i'm going to do is i'm going to say that in the second frame of animation it's going to use the red for the eyes so now when he's moving he's going to be doing that you know which will just kind of make him look a little bit more menacing um and when he's still so i'm going to manage my animations i'm going to call this one moving and I'm going to add an animation and call it still and when he's still I'm just going to paste that frame and he's just going to look like this um, <clears throat> and yeah so that's that's this character I'm going to go to object details and I'm going to make a new animation. I'm going to call it still. And I'm going to change the name of this first one to moving. And he's going to use moving for moving for still. He's going to use still no matter which direction he's going. Um, big characters like this are great if you can have them always facing forward because think if I had to make this character face all directions, how much of this tile set he'd use up, like the whole thing. So if I could just make him always ominously facing forward, that actually will help me a lot in resources. These are the things you don't have to think about in modern game development, but you really, really, really have to when you're dealing with uh, limited space. So... Uh, we do have to give him a reverse direction um, for if he hits a solid object and if he hits an edge of the screen. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make him move relatively fast, but his acceleration speed extremely slow. And we kind of looked, we saw what that looked like um, with my character when we were messing around with that. But this guy, he's supposed to be floaty. He's supposed to be kind of ghostly. So this will be neat. Um, with actions, it's not gonna be perfect. I already know there's gonna be a little bit of flaw, but you'll see he's gonna float and he's gonna move around the room with this floaty feeling. Uh, at the beginning, he's going to uh, move in eight directions. Uh, I'm sure, we'll do the random timer. Uh, when his animation, when his action is over, he's gonna advance. And when he advances, he's gonna go to still, and his action is gonna be stop moving. And when that uh, it's going to go to it's going to go to first. So it's going to keep looping between picking a direction, moving, stopping, and then uh, and then it's going to go back to first, which is picking a direction and then moving and then stopping. It's going to keep cycling between those two. And for moving, I'm going to set uh, a fairly fast animation speed. I, I honestly don't know which is going what's going to look best, but I could always tweak it. Okay, and bounding box. Characters like this bounding box is always very hard because you have to think. Let's say I just do that. That makes sense from a certain logical perspective. However, now he's going to go, like if he's up against a brick wall, his whole arm is going to end up going in the wall. But what if I do this? Now, if my head hits him right here or something, it hurts me. So I, I try and sort of split the difference and do something like that or you know something close to that where 
I still have room around him. I'm sort of cheating for the player, um, but it, but most of him is covered. Uh, if I want to be able to sort of walk behind him, if we had depth going in this engine, which we don't, I could do this, and then I could walk behind his head right there. Um, but yeah, I'll use this for a bounding box for now, and it's sort of cheating for the player. I always hated in Super Mario Brothers when you'd go to jump over Bowser, and you would clip the bounding box you it wouldn't be touching anything and you die and you're like hey i didn't even you didn't touch me he's cheating the game's cheating i remember yelling that at eight nine years old to my mom i didn't understand bounding boxes but now i do so uh that's good for the banshee um now i'm gonna make a monster group for him and what you're gonna notice is he's not he doesn't appear in tiles one because he's not in the first tile set he's in the second tile set and, and tile one tile set there he is and i'm gonna fill him in all of these slots even though i'm only gonna put one on the screen at a time and i'm gonna call him banshee and you know what i just realized something this is not gonna be a good color for him because this is very close to the color that i use for the ground so i'm gonna give him a, a a brighter cape here uh save banshee i'm gonna go back i'm gonna change this color um what would look good down there so he's purplish uh he'd look good if he was like a maybe a, a green wizard green wizard there we go that's what it'll look like um so now i got this banshee here um i got a group for him i'm gonna go to overworld and the screen that i want him to appear on i want him to appear like right here go to screen info and go to day monsters and he's not going to show up right now because i have to change it to tell that i want it to use tile set number one then my banshee appears he used sub palette one when i was creating him but he uses banshee one and he flips to banshee two so i need to have both of those loaded for this animation to look right otherwise if i had players in the player a palette in there when he flipped he'd show he'd play the the uh, players colors when he when he flipped so don't want that this is what i want hit okay and place the banshee sort of right here in the middle of the room and let's test it out and and see what this guy looks like Okay, so let's make sure I can get past him now, past these little monsters here. Okay, and go into my dungeon, and there he is. And now he's starting to move. And you see he starts to move. And you see how he kind of slowly starts to move? He's got sort of that creeping look. Now, this doesn't work, out, work, work very well for me. Um, he stays stopped for too long so let me fix that real quick and i think he accelerates still a little bit too slow so let's fix that up a little bit um whoops object details and actions um he's moving let me make sure that i said yeah reverse direction reverse direction okay um he's moving moving in eight directions i'm going to put his acceleration speed up just a little bit so he still accelerates slowly but he'll get there faster now um, and this was too long for him to be standing still so I'm actually gonna give it a time I'll put it at four let's see what that looks like um, and this should be moving animation speed okay let's test that out Now, incidentally, let's say I just want to test him. I got, he killed me. Let's say I just want to test his screen. Don't forget, I could go um, to this screen and just start it right here. Or I could start it right in the room with him, right? So let's try that. Now I can cheat and go right past him. There he is. There he goes. That's, that's sort of menacing looking. Uh, that's kind of scary, and I'll have to wait till he stops goaltending that and try to get past him all right cool um and it's it's definitely not perfect yet but you get the idea so now i have sort of a, a boss monster um maybe maybe i change the speed maybe i make him a little bit slower faster whatever but i just wanted to show you how we could do some tricks and and go from state to state like that um so with the banshee when he's done with his action he goes to um, this action, when he's done with this action, he goes to the first action and the cycle back over and over again. And I could make it so like when I hurt him, he jumps to action number five and then he shoots at me. And then action number six at the end of the animation, it loops, starts looping again. So we can start thinking about bosses like that. Once we start, once we code a bunch more of these behaviors, um, super cool stuff. Uh, just a uh, quick boss. And like I said, he's not much of a boss, 
but he looks menacing at least. And we'll make him cooler and cooler over the months and years that we spend <laughs> putting him in games. Um, all right, so in the next video, I'm going to make a win, a way to win. Uh, and then we're almost done. And it's adding music and touching some stuff up.